This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Sean Preston. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today, we have a good neighbor on with us, and that is Lisa Kulmone of Simcoe Makers Market. What's going on? Hi, how's it going? Uh, phenomenal. Uh, back at it after Father's Day weekend. Did a mm-hmm. little trip up to Sudbury and back. Took us like okay. four hours to come back. So I spent a little bit of time, more time than I probably like in the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I uh, got the chance to see both dads on both sides of the family. So, oh, well, that's good. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so I'm super curious. Uh, Simcoe Makers Market. I'm sure yeah. other people, if they haven't heard of your business, let's dive into it. Tell us a little bit more about your business. Yes. Yeah, so um, Simcoe Makers Market, um, basically I was born with the uh, intention of supporting our local communities by empowering our local businesses. How do I do that? Well, I curate family friendly uh, markets and events throughout Simcoe County um, to bring our vendors together, to bring the community together, uh, to get our vendors exposure. Um, so I've been organizing these events for over the last three years, um, always with a bigger goal in mind, because in November we opened up our boutique in Alliston. So we showcase over 65 local businesses and stores, as well as an eco refillery. What's an eco refillery? So you can bring in your um, clean uh, empty containers and refill on uh, natural home products like um, laundry detergents, dish soap, shampoos, things like that. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about these events uh, that you put on for uh, local businesses. What do those typically look like? Yeah. So um, we've been hosting events at local farms um, uh, like Murphy's Farm, Sheldon Creek Dairy, Maple Grove Farm, uh, gather um, lots of local businesses. So typically we have over 30, 40 businesses at each event, uh, family entertainment, uh, food trucks, uh, something for everybody, just like a nice day to get out, um, experience our, our local community. Uh, people don't usually know that there are so many businesses that create so many cool products. So it's nice to be able to bring everybody together to see our talented community. 100%. We are definitely big um, advocators of that uh, here on the show. Uh, Jeff and I are organizing in August on a Saturday. It's going to be on the 24th. We're organizing a Art of Bluffs Community Super Soaker Block Party event. Oh, that sounds so fun. Kind of do something similar. Line the line the soccer field with business owners have the, the food yeah truck. that's like awesome out there and let the kids go wild with some super soakers maybe get yeah. some fun. Oh, i hope i can make it out to that that's <laughs> like fun yeah yeah uh you know i haven't grown up so we're gonna, we're gonna have <laughs> fun as if we we're you know back in our Absolutely. early teens yeah that's fun perspective so Phenomenal. Okay. Well, how I'm always curious because everybody takes a different path in life to doing what they're doing. Some people, they are born. Yeah. I knew I wanted to be a vet since I was 14 years old and I'm still doing it 30 years later. And other people, I like to joke around and say, it's like the uh, Mazda zoom commercial. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. What has your journey been like leading up to doing what you do? Um, so uh, my journey started uh, before Simcoe Makers Market. So I actually do have a craft business as well, Twigs and Blooms by Lisa. So I make artificial floral uh, wreaths and arrangements. So um, I started that business while I was on maternity leave. So about four and a half years ago. Um, and I wanted, we had moved into our new home in Angus and I wanted a wreath for my door, but I couldn't find one that I liked. So I decided to try my hand at making one myself. And that's how I started that, you know, friends and neighbors were seeing my door and wanted their wreaths as well. So I started Twigs and Blooms. Um, in starting that, I started, uh, participating in local, uh, markets and events around Simcoe County and, I wasn't, um, unfortunately, to um, I wasn't pleased with the experiences that I was having in these events. So I decided to try and have a pop up shop in my driveway with five vendors, which turned out to be an incredible event. And then from there, it grew. Um, the next one was like seven vendors, and then we were across three houses and had like twenty vendors. And then it just grew to what it is today, with our largest event having over eighty vendors. 
Nice. So it's been it's been a it's been a great journey and definitely not what I had ever seen myself doing. But like I say to everybody, you don't know that you are creative until you try your hand at something and realize, oh hey, I can do that and, and that looks really good. Hundred percent. There's a lot that goes into like I sat down. I have uh, a a professional who's helping me organize this event, and we sat down, and the the amount of stuff that we wrote down on a piece of paper mm -hmm. for how uh, you have to cover, like you need insurance for all this stuff. Yeah. You know, waivers in our case yeah. for for the kids getting in the middle, and oh yeah, uh, everything else. Have you have to organize the food truck? Like the food truck needs to have like two fire extinguishers oh. on it, and they need to communicate to the fire department that they're there. Like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there's uh, a lot more than people realize that goes into organizing these events. Um, so it's it's uh, it's always nice to hear uh, how people can appreciate what they didn't what they didn't know, right? Yeah, hundred mm percent. -hmm. So, can you tell us are there any like myths or misconceptions when it comes to putting on these events? Um, I feel like I think the biggest the biggest issue in the industry over the last couple of years is hearing about all these unfortunate scams. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of a few different ones going on, um, fake events, people like businesses getting scammed out of, out of money, like signing up for events that aren't even real events. So it's just, it's, I, I just always like to say, do your due diligence when you're researching which events to participate in, um, because you want to make sure that they're legitimate, that, um, you know, the work is actually being put in to making it um, a good event for it being advertised properly. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into these events and you want to make sure when you're signing up for them that you're signing up for something legitimate and something that is going to benefit you in your business. Yeah, I, uh, I'll agree with you there. I just heard a story of, uh, of a dad who wanted to buy hockey tickets for the finals between, uh, between, uh, uh, the, uh, the Edmonton Oilers and, um, and, and what they got going on in the, in the, in the playoffs, I think he dropped 1500 bucks wow. and never, never saw, never saw it back. It just got yeah. like completely scammed. So definitely paying yeah. attention and watching. And it's so much easier now with all the AI and everything. Right. So it's, 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 it's scary, but I, like I say, you gotta, you gotta try and do your due diligence when, when dealing with people, especially through the internet. So I know the ramifications of all the hard work and putting it together. You, you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor and seeing other people happy, connecting other people together. We certainly know uh, what that feels like uh, on our side of the fence here, the Good Neighbor podcast. Um, but there's also a bit of a harmony as much as we work. We work really hard. <laughs> but then there's also times where we need to give some of that back to ourselves and so I'm curious to ask you, when you're not working on your business, non-business related, what does Lisa like to do for fun? Um, the little time that I do get to myself, uh, I just spend with my family, um, my dog, my son, my husband, uh, you know, just doing the family things, going out on some adventures. My son's almost five, so taking him to do all the fun kid things. So that's uh, what really brings me joy is just being able to do things with my family. Nice. How old is he? Uh, he is going to be five in September. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. That's the terrible twos. No, <laughs> that doesn't start till later. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's definitely testing his boundaries lately, but uh, it's to be expected in, uh, in a little boy. So yeah. Yeah. What about your dog? What kind of dog do you have? He is a golden retriever Labrador mix who's trying to get inside now. Um, <laughs> but Freddie just turned two the other day. And uh, unfortunately, we all kind of slipped and forgot about his birthday. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, mine just turned three in April. He's an April Fool's baby. I got a oh, long haired Australian Shepherd. So. Oh, cute. Yeah. And uh, I am a dog friendly boutique as well. So that's something good for people to know. They can always bring their their dog, cat, lizard, whatever pet you have, bring them into the store. Phenomenal. So in life, we always pick a path, right? And we think, okay, this path is the one I'm going to walk based off of my goals, my needs, my dreams, that, that whole bit. And then sometimes life will get in the way. It'll throw a challenge at us. We experience hardships. Sometimes they're tragic. Other times they're, they're, they're mild. Everybody gets it a little bit different. Uh, but sometimes it'll push or pull us, put us on a completely 
new path and and that's life we can't control life um but what amazes me uh in human beings is their ability to be able to overcome these Resilience. challenges the, the, the glass half full yeah. uh, holding on to hope finding silver linings and in something Absolutely. negative trying to turn it into a positive that sort of thing so i wanted to ask you if you've ever experienced a, a hardship or a life challenge that you overcome maybe it made you better maybe it made you stronger maybe you took some silver linings from it um i mean personally first of all i i always try and find the positive in everything and the silver lining in everything so um i try and overcome any challenge with a positive attitude uh, because i think that's key in getting through any any hardship in life um I think the I think the challenge, um, and not even just for myself. I think just for everybody lately is is the economy. Really, um, you know, we're all struggling. Everybody's struggling in one way or another to get by. Groceries are expensive, so you know, especially in a retail setting, when it comes to spending, it really comes down to needs and wants. Um, so, I mean, I would say economy would be a, a huge, uh, a huge, um, heart like you know, life challenge for everybody. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, the community support is everything. And, um, I feel like the support that I've received in the community since the boutiques opening in November and doing all these events, um, that, you know, like if we all support each other, we can get through the hardships and the challenges together. Um, it really comes down to supporting each other. Um, and I think, uh, it's, it's, it's. It's uh, it's like I said, I try and go every, into everything with a positive attitude um, because I think we can overcome anything as a team. Yeah, we've got a great business community here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always so uh, helpful and heartwarming to to work with, and mm -hmm. uh, if we've we see it right when we do our, our networking events. We see the the uh, the alliance partnerships that are made, or referral partners, uh, friends, and friendships are formed mm -hmm. uh, in the process. Uh, seeing customers uh or seeing people buy from each other become customers of of mm -hmm. one another uh we've got that that circle of trust yeah. uh, going on here and it's it's really nice to see because it, it doesn't necessarily exist everywhere so I no exactly right and everywhere. yeah and i mean allison's shown us why it's been so, the most perfect place to set our roots down um the support that that our community has shown since the opening has has been phenomenal and um I think we can all get through it together um, by supporting each other. So what's one thing that you wish our listeners knew about your business? Um, I don't know. I'm pretty much an open book. So any questions asked will be answered. Um, uh, but, uh, oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's, I think that's the tough question there. <laughs> um, uh, is, it, is there a common thing people come into your store and say uh, maybe that could be another misconception from people? Um, maybe a history of the store that not a lot of people know about that you'd want to share, stuff like that. Um, I think I, I think the biggest misconception is they think that I was open somewhere else down the street, but it wasn't me. <laughs> okay. So uh, it is the first location. Um so I think that's a misconception there. But um, other than that, you know what? Like, it's just it's just been a, a, an overwhelming, like, it's just been an overwhelming support and gratitude from the community. I, I, I have no, 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 like, complaints on that. And you know what I mean? Um, everybody, like, I, I want everybody to know that I'm, I'm just really adamant about supporting our businesses. And I just really want to help our businesses get exposed and I want to help them make money. And that is my goal is to, to help however many people I can help in whatever outlets I can do that in. Wonderful. Well, echo that sentiment. And so for those who are interested and maybe wanting to know a little bit more and either participating in your events or coming to check out your shop, what's the best mm -hmm. way that they can reach you? Um, so we're on both Instagram and Facebook, Simcoe Makers Market. Um, there is a page for the events. There is a page for the boutique. Um, or you can visit us in store at 27 Victoria Street West in Alliston on the right on the downtown uh, strip. Amazing. Absolutely love what you stand for and what you represent and yeah. helping bolster our community, helping people create connections. Uh, Jeff and I are big proponents of, uh, of that as well. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me.
you're more than welcome. Looking forward to potentially doing this down the line. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Midhurst. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gmpmidhurst.com. That's gmpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.